So if you guys are connoisseurs of like online meme music or the popular troll tactic of the classic bait and switch, then you may already be familiar with this particular redirected song prank. Naked, naked puddles. already familiar with Ram Ranch because of Justin Wang's coverage on it, which I highly suggest that you go watch and subscribe to Justin's series, Tales from the Internet. But for those who have no idea what this is, Ram Ranch is an adventure in musical form. <laughs> Ram Ranch is the long-running album series that was created by Canadian musician Grant McDonald. Grant always wanted to be a country singer, inspired by movies like Brokeback Mountain. Because obviously, 18 naked cowboys. He was not able to get a record deal when trying to get his name out there out in Nashville with his idea of romantic country music. I wonder why. 18 naked cowboys wanted to be fucked. <laughs> How is this six fucking minutes? However, from 2012 to today, Grant has created a cult-like following for his Ram Ranch series. Ram Ranch had only one story beat throughout the entirety of its existence. It stays consistent through all of the songs, with some iterations to give conflict and to introduce characters. But the general gist is this. Eighteen naked cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch. Big herd throbbing cocks wanting to be sucked. Eighteen naked cowboys wanting to be fucked. Cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch on their knees wanting to suck cowboy cocks. Ram Ranch really rocks. This video is already not getting monetized. Holy shit. I can already tell. And it wasn't even because of Ram Ranch. It's because of things that happen later. Welcome back to the Lazy Bedhead Show. I'm Lazy Bedhead, and today I decided to make a video at 2 in the morning in my pajamas because I'm insane. If you guys like what I do here, I have a Patreon you can support where you can get stuff like exclusive podcast content and accessibility to a video request forum. I have two tiers for the Patreon, one for $1 and one for $5 where you get a special thank you. Here's that. Funding for the Lazy Bedhead channel was provided by viewers like you. Thank you. Now it's time to get into probably the least fun video I'm ever going to make. Enjoy. <laughs> so yeah, Ram Ranch is pretty self-explanatory just by the title of the song. It's a cowboy ranch and everybody's gay. <laughs> Ram Ranch can only be described as one of the most dedicated internet character slam poetry spoken word things I've ever seen. Now, I said that this is like a series of music entries, and when I say that, I'm sure you're just probably thinking like an album's worth of music. Like one or two albums of Ram Ranch, right? Ram Ranch has over 750 entries, and as the story progresses, we go on a magical journey. <laughs> I can't obviously go through the entire thing because there are so many of these, <laughs> but to give the most notable parts, obviously, Ram Ranch is a ranch with 36 naked cowboys, total 36 naked cowboys. You think that there's 18, and then in the next song, you learn that there's a whole field with 18 more. <laughs> and these gay naked cowboys are very horny. Ram Ranch 1 through 9 is basically just these 36 naked cowboys having orgies in various locations, including a bunkhouse outside in their yard, a rodeo, and Jasper, Canada, where they fuck Prince Harry. I mean, I 
I've said weirder things on this channel, but for some reason this hits different. You know what I mean? There are characters that we get introduced to like Sean. All you really need to know about Sean, at least right now, is that Sean has a 12 inch cock. You know, given what this video is going to be later about, I feel like describing and like relaying the, the lore of Ram Ranch is not very appropriate. <laughs> Look, the point is, is that we get introduced to like every single cowboy on the ranch at some point, and they all have massive dicks, and they're all fucking each other, and they're all horny, and sometimes they gangbang Prince Harry, or 28 Marines and a Black Ford Raptor, or jo Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> Let me just put it like this, all right? If there was like a trending celebrity at the time that said entry was released, you know that they're eventually gonna end up getting like fucked at Ram Ranch. <laughs> and by the time that they get to Ram Ranch number 100, they're all in space, I think, and Grant McDonald drops the N word with the hard R. <laughs> 40 naked, fucking 38. Wild frat jocks. Each Ram Ranch is like a different music genre. Now, most of the time it's like this heavy metal track. Sometimes it's like 80s rock. But it's always accompanied with audio from gay porn and Grant McDonald screaming at the top of his lungs the gayest things I've ever heard. In the showers at Ram Ranch, breathing his butter butthole. Look, not that I have a problem with that, it's just... It's a lot. <laughs> now, this song came to mainstream relevancy in 2020. In the past, it was already kind of a big internet joke, but this was the first time that new sites would bring awareness of Ram Ranch to the general populace. You know, the ones that actually touch real grass at real ranches. <laughs> Canadian convoy protest was a blockade of Canadian truckers who were protesting the COVID-19 vaccine. It was called the Freedom Convoy by the organizers who were protesting mandatory vaccinations in America, in Canada? I mean, I guess this would have eventually affected them too because everything that America does, Canada just copies. Okay, well, regardless of what you think of any of this, that doesn't really matter. What really matters is the counter-protesting that overshadowed the original reasons of what this blockade was even for. I would say that this is a pretty good example of how counter-protesting can be incredibly effective. So counter-protesters of the Freedom Convoy were getting into these Zello channels. Zello is basically like an alternative to using traditional walkie-talkies by using channels through this app on your phone. These truckers were using this app as an alternative to speaking with each other other than using their built-in radios. The troll protesters would spam these truckers through Zello with Ram Ranch. So anytime the truckers were trying to talk to each other to organize the protest, they would just be bombarded with Ram Ranch. On social media, the hashtag Ram Ranch Resistance was used to identify other counter protesters and would trend as news would cover this mass trolling event. In response to his song being used to troll anti-vaxxers, Grant is quoted in being ecstatic that his song was being used to stand up for science. To celebrate the mainstream usage of his music for this protest, Grant would also release the song Ottawa Truckers, where he just proceeds to shit all over the truckers and refer to the trucker convoy itself as Ram Ranch. You know, as he does. <laughs> so. All things considered, Grant sounds like a pretty dedicated guy to this joke, who is pro-vaccine, pro-LGBTQ, and he's in some weird way trying to use this as a creative outlet of sorts. And people are still talking about and making remixes and memes and fan music videos for his music to this day, even though the first Ram Ranch was made in 2012, over a decade ago. So uh, given that this is a lazy bedhead video where everything goes wrong and horrible things happen all of the time, where's uh, the terrible plot twist uh, that explains the title of this video? Well, <laughs> as of January 23rd of this year, 2024, Grant McDonald has been arrested and held in prison for distributing his nephew's nudes. Oh. Hello, 
darkness, my old friend. Can I not have nice things? Is anything sacred anymore? Get this shit off my screen right now. Get this shit out of here right. Oh my god, Drake, I refuse to repair the showers here. It's just a bunch of cowboys. How bad can it be? <laughs> All right, so what we're looking at right now is a cease and desist that was posted on Reddit by user Lord Jackson 4 So they provided the cease and desist notice as well as Discord messages that we're gonna get into later. But before I even read to you this cease and desist and tell you what this is about, let's talk about what the hell was going on on Grant's Twitter account before this was posted on Reddit. So this was on January 19th and Grant with a verified uh, Twitter account, Ram Ranch, uh, posted this. There is a political plot against Grant McDonald and Ram Ranch because of the Ram Ranch's support for vaccinations during COVID-19. This is an evil tactic performed in Canada by a political party gone off the rails. So this is the GoFundMe that he links to, and this GoFundMe is asking for $7,000, and it currently has only raised 128 dollars CAD, which I'm assuming is Canadian funds. Um, so that already is really not looking good. I mean, you know, given the notoriety of this guy and his music, you'd sort of think that with the dedicated amount of people that like Ram Ranch and listen to all of Grant's songs, they would help at least fund a little more than just $128. But we'll get into why this GoFundMe is currently looking like a flop. Now, of course, outside of, like, the all caps, like, shouting about a conspiracy, uh, Grant goes on to write, Dear compassionate supporters, we find ourselves at a crucial moment in our fight to protect Ram Ranch, a cherished community that is currently under attack. Our goal is to rally together and raise funds for the legal fees necessary to safeguard the rights and well-being of those who call Ram Ranch home. Ram Ranch is not just a place. It is a vibrant community that has been a source of solace and support for countless individuals. However, it is currently facing legal challenges that threaten its existence. We believe in justice, fairness, and the right of every community to thrive. Your support can make a real difference. By contributing to our legal fund, you are not just helping defend Ram Ranch. You are standing up for the values of community, inclusivity, and the right to live without fear of unwarranted legal action. Every donation, no matter the size, brings us one step closer to securing the legal representation needed to protect Ram Ranch. Let's unite and show the strength of our shared commitment to justice and community. Now, this GoFundMe was set up initially on January 7th by Grant McDonald himself. And only on January 19th does Grant ask people to make donations towards this GoFundMe on his public social media accounts, which is really strange. Like, already it's not looking promising if you set up a GoFundMe and then don't advertise that or bring it to your public platforms, not even to your Discord server, until 11 days after its inception? I don't think that's normally how people usually go about, like, setting up GoFundMes like this, but whatever. But there is a reason why people are not supporting this GoFundMe. Even his most dedicated following isn't donating to this. And it's not just because Grant didn't really advertise this, it's because just reading through this and just looking at this GoFundMe, everything about it just screams a scam to me, right? Like, first of all, there is nothing in this GoFundMe that explains in any capacity why Grant McDonald would need legal representation. He says that our goal is to rally together and raise funds for the legal fees to safeguard the rights and well-being of those who call Ram Ranch home, but Ram Ranch isn't a real place, so what the fuck is he talking about? Nothing in this post tells the potential supporters what exactly they're raising the funds for. I mean, he says that this is like a political plot against him because he supported the COVID-19 vaccinations. So I'm assuming that this is indicating that this is being set up because Grant is getting attacked by like people of the Freedom Convoy and anti-vaxxers. But that was 
like over three years ago. I mean, I know anti-vaxxers are insane, like don't get me wrong, but I don't think they would dedicate three years of their lives to just harassing this one dude that used to be like an underground internet figure and still kind of is. Like, would they even really give that much of a shit? But also nothing in the GoFundMe tells you what the lawsuit is even about. I mean, is he trying to sue someone? Or is he trying to raise funds for a defense team because he himself is getting sued? And if that's the case, if he needs a defense team, what is he getting sued for? Everything in this GoFundMe, like, screams a scam. But it's surprisingly not a scam. In fact, it is way worse than we could have ever imagined. Alright, we're doing a brief lighting change because I wanted to record this video like it was a fucking ContraPoints video. <laughs> Let's talk about Sean Driscoll, who has a very suspicious name, but anyways. All right, so we're gonna get into the cease and desist. Uh, notice to cease and desist communications with Mr. Sean Driscoll and related persons. But anyways, uh, this cease and desist was filed by Tara Boghosian, who represents the Heinen Hutchinson Robintail LLP. So Tara is a civil lawyer who works in civil and criminal litigation. She represents Sean Driscoll in this cease and desist in which she has a few demands for Mr. Grant McDonald. So Grant has been ordered according to this letter, uh, serves as a formal notice to you to cease and desist any and all communications with Mr. Driscoll and persons related to him, including his friends, acquaintances, employer, and professional colleagues. Please also cease and desist from posting about Mr. Driscoll on any social media platform or website. So this goes on to talk about just like cutting all contact with him. But this is the part right here that we really need to talk about. This letter also serves as a formal notice for you to cease and desist dissemination of intimate and sexualized images and recordings of Mr. Driscoll in any form. He does not consent to distribution of intimate images or recordings relating to him in any format. However, do not delete any images or recordings as they are relevant evidence in a civil legal action that is being contemplated against you. Oh boy, this is not looking good. This looks bad. So I guess we need to kind of get into who Sean Driscoll is anyways. From what the original poster says on Reddit, this is Grant McDonald's nephew, who crazily enough is actually a conservative politician from Canada. Sean is someone of interest, not just because of the cowboy who, look, I I'm just going to make an educated guess here and say that that very first cowboy that we're introduced to in Ram Ranch is probably named after his nephew. <laughs> Boy, that has horrible connotations now, doesn't it? But it's not just that. Grant has made a series of musical pieces that include Sean Driscoll directly by name, including songs such as Sean Driscoll begging, uh, fucking Sean Driscoll twice for whatever reason with different... I'm gonna have to blur those images. I don't know if those are allowed on the internet. And of course, everybody's favorite, um, Driscoll boy... Lovely. This is his nephew, by the way, that he is including by his legal name in these songs. How do you write a song about fucking your, your nephew and have it be 13 minutes long? So, from what it looks like, this sexual attraction that Grant has had towards his own nephew was a pretty open secret, disturbingly enough. It appears that the Discord community knew of this sexual relationship since at least October of 2020. Before, Sean was the first character to be introduced into the Ram Ranch series, and it was always this sort of inside joke that Grant and Sean were a couple. And this, of course, was like under the guise that Sean wasn't actually like a real person, it was just a character from Grant's cinematic universe. But the messages that Grant would make in regards to Sean would prove that he was at the very least, a real person. So I have to uh, emphasize that I don't know the validity of most of these and I don't know which, if this is like in their general chat or what, but we have an example right here. Uh, Grant, when are you and Sean getting married? Of course, a lot of this is probably the inside joke of like Sean from Ram Ranch, uh, but Grant says, 
Avunculate marriage was the preferred type of union in some pre-modern societies. Marriages between such close relatives were frequent in ancient, ancient sorry, Egypt, at least among members of ruling dynasties. When Sean says yes, tax-free insurance, he gets all rights to my estate, could be worth billions. <laughs> so Grant would give personal information about Sean to his Discord community, such as, of course, his legal first and last name. And he talks about the concept of avunculate marriage. So avunculate marriage is basically marrying your own niece and nephew. So, you know, just by him talking about, like, this type of marriage, you can kind of refer that Sean is his nephew if Grant is proposing this type of marriage. And even in his response to the accusations of having sexual images of his nephew and being in an explicit relationship, Grant doesn't ever break out of that announcer role character that he puts on for his music. So let's start with just this right here. Uh, I'm not sure when exactly this was posted because it just says today, but uh, I'm assuming this probably came out sometime during the initial allegation that was made that he was posting um, Sean's nudes and w people were accusing him of like like having sexual relationship with his nephew. Um, and it says right here, I have never had sex with my nephew Sean Driscoll and I have not seen him in over 18 months. A fantasy written into the lore of Ram Ranch with two related cowboys is what this is so you can take your nasty innuendos and shove them up your fucking arses. Thor on the floor, Prince Harry begging for more, Augustus Caesar loved his great nephew Octavius and made him his heir. Nobody complained. It is legal in Australia and France to marry your niece. Religious lunatics are trying to destroy Ram Ranch and will only propel the ranch into more fame. Ram Ranch and cowboys and cowboys will reign supreme. I find this particular response to the initial allegations very interesting because he goes on to say how, like, he hasn't seen Sean in over 18 months, right? So he and Sean are, like, not in contact, so there's no way he could have ever had sex with his nephew or whatever. And it's a fantasy that was written into the lore of Ram Ranch itself, and anybody who is taking it literally is just, like, perceiving it as, like, a nasty innuendo. Except for when once you get to right here, he says Augustus Caesar loved his great nephew Octavius and made him his heir. Nobody complained. And it is illegal in Australia and France to marry your niece. So it's like he's denying the allegations that he ever like had a sexual relationship with his like nephew Sean, but in the same breath will also justify like getting married to your own nieces and nephews. Like the doubling down is very particular with this because if like the accusation is you're doing this and then your response to that is justifying the accusation, I don't know. I don't think that's a very good response. Orgy in the showers at Ram Ranch, big heart throbbing cocks, Ram and cowboy. Why would you have that play as your music when you're fighting Herbert. enemies, dog? So back in February of 2021, Grant would go on this rant in regards to the legalities of nephew-uncle relationships. And what he had to say in regards to that is very disturbing, so fair warning. <laughs> Yeah, so Sean is a bigger representation of Ram Ranch and, and so pivotal. So, you know, hey, and furthermore, do you know in fucking Australia and France that uncles are allowed legally to marry their nieces? And it was brought in so that uncles could pass down their estates. But it's legal in fucking France and Australia for an uncle to marry their fucking niece. It's legal. So the fact of the matter is, either way, per se, you know, my, my fucking music is cutting fucking edge stuff. It's, uh, you know, going where maybe no music went before. 18 fucking naked cowboys in the showers and fucking Prince Harry and Thor on the floor and the fuck ship, the cum ship and the fucking, you know, cock ship. So, you know, I'm just honored to have my fans out there, you know, and furthermore, you know, you guys in America and Alabama and the fucking South, if there's fucking rednecks that are fucking their nieces or, or hey, listen, this is nephews. I don't fucking go for the niece shit. You know, the fucking redneck fucking characters in the back hills <clears throat> with their fucking nephews over.
over a goddamn barrel and the fucking guy is fucking his ass off. You, you go up to porno sites and you put in uncle, uncle, and there's about 687 fucking videos up there of an uncle fucking his frat boy nephew with all the other frat boys. So don't, don't hold your fucking brow up too fucking high. Like, Oh my God, like what is fucking happening? Just fucking deal with it for fuck's sakes. You know, get on the cock ship or the fuck ship or the cum ship and have some fun and go for the ride. You know, like give me a fucking break. Is that all you got to do is to make a person puke? So in June of 2021, Grant's Reddit account would make a post on the Ram Ranch subreddit that argued the legalities for nephew and uncles to get married. Now, in replies to that post regarding nephew, uncle, legalities in marriage, uh, a lot of people were commenting an interesting turn of events on the Ram Ranch Reddit page, to which OP, who is Grant McDonald, would post this website link. Now, that website link does not work anymore. I've tried to look through Wayback Machine. There doesn't seem to be any archives of it anywhere. This website, which is seandriscoll.xxx, uh, basically <laughs> is a website that Grant made to post his nephew's nudes. <laughs> allegedly, of course. The only reason I say allegedly is because one, there's not like a ton of coverage on this that goes like outside of like Reddit, Twitter, and Kiwi Farms. There hasn't been any mainstream coverage or articles on this subject. And the other reason, number two, is because the website in question no longer works. There's not any archives of this website, so I can't say for sure what exactly Grant was using this website for. The only testimonials of what this once was was reported on, of all places, uh, knowyourmeme.com. <laughs> now listen, I, I understand that using know your meme as a source is probably not the best idea. I get it. That's very cringe. But what's interesting is that they have actually been like documenting and reporting on all of this information and keeping track of this shit for a while. So this appears to be the only place where any of this was being like documented and reported on. What I can confirm just by going through Grant McDonald's like Reddit page itself is how Grant would refer to his own nephew. So as you can see right here, this is user Grant McDonald. We know that this is his account. Uh, he calls his own nephew a fucking whore. He also posted this image. I'm pretty sure that this is not Sean himself. And this is something that like Grant will do, especially with like the album art for Ram Ranch is that he'll just post random, I'm guessing gay porn stores and like calling them Sean. This is obviously not Sean, but he calls Sean a cock whore. So that's lovely. That's your nephew, oh my god. The most disturbing of these Reddit posts made by Grant McDonald uh, to the Ram Ranch subreddit was this one right here. Uh, this one is called Sean Driscoll Slut Hole. Uh, this is, sorry, this original was deleted. Uh, and the reason why it was deleted is because this used to be like an image dump. Uh, it was not safe for work because this used to be Sean Driscoll's nudes. To which I'm actually like pretty impressed by the Ram Ranch community for calling out Grant's shitty behavior. Because all of them are basically condemning all of this being like, Grant, stop posting your nephew's nudes and stop being an asshole. And also, Grant, stop being a shitty uncle. So, oh, that fell. I don't... Where did the tack go? I'm in the darkness and the tack fell and my whole thing fell down. I don't know where... Oh god. Now, personally, I believe this to be probably the most shocking of the allegations towards Grant McDonald. I can't verify the validity of this because this is an incredibly cropped screenshot. But this is Grant basically saying that he uses meth and he raped Sean, Sean being his nephew. Again, of course, because this is like a really highly cropped screenshot, the verification of this can't be determined. But, you know, given how much of a meme Sean is in regards to the Ram Ranch universe and within Grant's circles, I mean, not to even mention all of the musical references to incest and justifying having a sexual relationship with Sean, I mean, I can't say that I didn't see this coming. Not like that. It was found out in Grant McDonald's own Discord server that the character Sean in all of his music 
was actually his nephew. I do not approve or support incest at all in any way, shape, or form. If I were to keep making Ram Ranch lore videos, I would not only be supporting it, I would be promoting it. Now, some people I have told this to would ask me, why don't I just separate the art from the artist? Well, in some situations that could work, but in this case specifically, the art itself is about incest. And once you know Sean is his nephew, all the music is tainted. Now, something I do want to clarify is that this isn't a pedophilia claim and that apparently Sean is of age and they are both consenting adults to all this, but at the end of the day, it is still incest and I just cannot support that. Okay, I fixed the green screen behind me, but I am still very afraid because there's a tack on the floor that I that I used to hang this up before it uh, fell down uh, and now it's somewhere on the floor and it's dark and I can't see where it is. I'm afraid I'm gonna step on attack. It's totally fine, whatever. Now we can get into like the actual arrest. So I decided to pull up the original post to the Ram Ranch uh, subreddit by Lord Jackson, and he provides us with these messages on Grant's Discord the day he got arrested. <laughs> so after advertising his GoFundMe for legal fees, Three days later, Grant was arrested and the messages from his Discord were leaked. Stalin, they're getting the warrant. Surrender, Grant. You need to do this above board. Winnipeg, Milwaukee, Toronto, Ottawa, Charlottetown, Washington, D.C., Calgary. All love you, Grant. Yup. <laughs> what, what the fuck is Dr. Eggman doing here? Who posted my nudes at Twitter.com? Who posted my nudes on Twitter.com? <laughs> Don't lose hope. Honored. Emergency. We will help you, Grant. Thanks. We will. Cops en route? Toronto. You can count on us outside a door. So I have no idea what the hell of this conversation is, but from the sounds of it, it looks like he's trying to get people to, like, come to his house to like pick him up before the cops get to his home to arrest him. This looks like uh, avoiding arrest or resisting arrest, whatever it had, whatever the charge would be for that. I'm being arrested. Is everything all right? Stay safe. Help me. Getting arrested again. Getting warrant? Toronto. Risha Gupta is my lawyer. Help. Now, according to the moderators of the Ram Ranch Cowboy Fun Discord, which is what the name of the Discord is, which sounds so lovely. Grant would post Sean's nudes regularly on the Discord. All of this is what the cease and desist is in reference to. Not just like the private distribution of somebody's nudes without their consent, but also posting those images publicly on Reddit. That paired with Grant's repeated references to having a relationship with Sean or wanting to be in a relationship or finding legal routes to marry his nephew, all all of this is incredibly shocking and it's not just in the allegation itself but it's the fact that this was such a well-known fact for years that Grant was predatory towards his own nephew and it goes just far beyond just having his nudes it's wanting to be married to his own family member and it, it kind of makes me ask like how did we not know about this sooner and to the people who did know why the hell did no one say anything? How can you fucking do this to me, sweet Shawnee boy? Fuck, prick, lunatic, backstabbing, fucking prick. We shall go to trial. We shall win this. And I will expose you as being the extortionist that you are. So, I'm trying to do this thing with my videos where I try to find any and every reason as to how things could have happened the way they did. Like, you know, it's one thing to like talk about a story and say how horrible this is and parrot what everyone else is probably going to say in regards to this situation, right? But I'd like to find at least some, not justification, just like an explanation on how we got here. Like, I could tell you all this and then just conclude my video with, wow, uh, Grant McDonald uh, is really shitty. He's a really shitty person. Thanks for watching. <laughs> but that won't accomplish anything. All that's gonna do is just create an echo chamber of discussion where Everyone basically has the same opinion and shares my sentiment and my opinion on the whole thing. 
if we can break this down into like a multifaceted discussion, then we can have at least a more diverse conversation about it. And honestly, take this as like some sort of learning experience. Like what can we learn from this? Now keep all of this in mind that everything I'm about to say is just me kind of theorizing and trying to wrap my brain around what I just bore witness to. <laughs> I'm gonna break this down into three categories. Politically, socially, and parasocially. The reasons why all of this even happened in the first place. So let's start with politically. Now, this one to me is probably the most obvious because as I mentioned before, uh, Sean Driscoll is a conservative politician who also is the nephew of the creator of one of the gayest love anthems of all time. <laughs> the irony of that never ceases to not be funny. <laughs> so normally speaking in regards to uh, most people who willingly identify themselves as conservative, right? They tend to believe in certain ideologies that would contrast with Grant's own personal beliefs. And this isn't to say that all conservatives are like this because right-leaning political beliefs like any party's beliefs is multifaceted and complicated and it all exists on a spectrum or a compass or a pungent square, whatever, it doesn't matter. And I say all this to say that Sean could very well be like a conservative candidate that believes in LGBTQ rights and is pro-vaccine. So he probably like falls within the conservative party for other reasons that are not social reasons. But you could probably imagine, given how self-identified conservatives have treated like LGBTQ people throughout history, that this sort of alignment could be ruinous for like the personal familial relationship between Sean and Grant. Because, I don't know if you noticed this, but Grant is very, very gay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what could have uh, given that away. Maybe it was the 750 love songs he makes about wanting to get fucked by cowboys. <laughs> but yeah, he is very obviously very gay. And I'm sure seeing his nephew registered as a conservative probably doesn't bode well for his personal opinions, especially since his songs have been used as a counter protest for a conservative protest against vaccines. <laughs> so in my grand conspiracy with all of this, maybe Grant is trying to ruin Sean's political career. Maybe he's just very angry with Sean for political reasons. Maybe that's why they haven't talked in 18 months like Grant claims. I mean, think of it this way, right? You're a conservative politician who is running as a representative for your province, right? You're campaigning on conservative values and beliefs and getting your name out there in the public eye as a conservative politician. So now with your name out there, you're easily searchable online. And that means when people try to look up your name, Sean Driscoll, they find Driscoll boy. I mean, come on, this has to be a slight. I mean, what else could it be? I mean, it would make sense if we're going to presume that Grant is still playing a character, which is where we can kind of transition into talking about the social aspects of this. So we have to take into consideration the fact that Grant and this whole Ram Ranch thing, he, he tends to take it very seriously, right? He's been working on this whole project for over a decade. And with this amount of dedication, it's really hard to try and see this as a joke because who keeps up this kind of thing for that long? Plus, when you read some of his messages, it's hard to believe that someone like this who talks like this could exist and be a real person. <laughs> everything in regards to Ram Ranch and Sean and everything else could very well just be a character running a joke for far too long. And maybe the joke went too far by getting family members involved. I mean, this very well could all just be fake like Grant claims. This is all just a fantasy in the lore of Ram Ranch. I mean, you know, given the GoFundMe itself and the fact that Ram Ranch isn't really meant to be taken literally anyways, I can sort of believe that when Grant says that it's just a fantasy written into the lore of Ram Ranch. Ranch. Because in comparison to all of his other music, everything 
is a fantasy. This man writes songs about fucking celebrities and 18 imaginary naked cowboys. <laughs> and he's made like so many of these, some of which are in response to public figures like Donald Trump Jr., who are very openly outspoken against LGBTQ people. So this could very well just be like a creative outlet for him to have gay fantasies with people who you wouldn't assume are gay just for a shit post. Just to fuck with these controversial people and make fun of them by making songs about them having gay sex. But in that same token, why would Grant make reference to family members for that purpose of a shit post? And not just make reference to it, but post their nudes, like for real. <laughs> like you could say that he did this as a joke and as a character, but when you're posting revenge porn, which is essentially what this is, the character is over. I mean, if someone like Filthy Frank did this, I don't think anyone would be supporting either the character or Joji anymore. But like I pointed out previously, this has been an open secret for three years, so... What the hell's up with that? Well, that's where we can talk about the parasocial aspects of this. So, under the impression that this is all just a character and this isn't meant to be taken seriously, it makes sense that people never really reported this or spoke up about it because even if Sean was in reference to a real person, even if this guy does seemingly have a crush on his own family member, it's still Ram Ranch and the joke is kind of on you if you take any of this seriously and you actually take what Grant says into consideration. This is a huge joke in internet subculture. And the guy is dedicated enough to keep it going that it's only fair that his fans do the same thing. Even if that means dismissing these red flags. I mean, it's hyping your boy up, you know? It's playing into the joke so that it can keep going. And when you encourage this bad behavior to keep up with the joke, the red flags just seem to be part of the character and not like real crimes. <laughs> when you look at posts in regards to the reporting on this situation on Reddit, a lot of the replies are continuing the same joke of shouting like it's a Ram Ranch song and saying stuff like this. Yeah, Sean Driscoll piece of shit getting Grant arrested. Fucking psycho asshole I'm gonna make you my bitch. Fucking crooked cops with their crooked cocks. Hard as rocks, piece of shit, Sean Driscoll. Fucking asshole. Gonna get fucked deep, deep, deep. Hard and hard and hard. By 40 naked- Oh my god! So... Yeah. <laughs> this has been compared a lot to Viper, or at the very least, like, Viper gets brought up in regards to this situation. Viper has scammed his fans, never fulfilled any obligations for live shows and tours, and he makes funny meme music, but is a terrible fucking person who probably groomed someone and trapped a woman in his house for five years. I don't think that Grant can necessarily be compared to Viper or even like someone like Daniel Larson. Like, I get that they all make music that gets memed on and they all have like an ironic fan base, but people genuinely actually liked Ram Ranch and Grant in an unironic way. Like, unlike Viper and Daniel Larson, they're both pieces of shit that don't try to convince people that they are not pieces of shit. Grant was genuinely a good guy who genuinely convinced people that he wasn't a bad person. He was a guy that was just dedicated to his work. And because that work revolves around making jokes about incest and rough gay sex, the very obvious scummy shit that was going on this whole time couldn't really be detected. Like, this is literally just a case of defense by irony. Because here's the thing, if I started writing songs that became crazy popular in meme culture and those songs are all about killing people and then it turned out I murdered someone, that can only go one of two ways. Either people are not going to be shocked at all or people will be shocked that I was being literal and not just making a funny meme song. And that's kind of what happened to Grant because his legacy is Ram Ranch and this legacy ruining activity was something that no one could imagine Grant actually be capable of. Considering that he ran it like it was a joke for years. And if you ever took what Grant said seriously, previous to his arrest now, then the joke's on you for taking that literally. So I guess the lesson to be had here is, if it walks like a duck, and it talks like a duck, he probably fucked his nephew, most likely. Like, what the fuck? 
gentlemen, so I think that's gonna be it for uh, today's video. I hated everything about this experience. This has been me, Mudahar, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> this is literally just, I literally just made a Mudahar style video where I just fucking pulled up an article and started reading. <laughs> hey, at least my videos are gonna be in focus. <laughs> so I was gonna end the video here, but um, I wanted to insert this in because we're rolling into February and what you're gonna notice about the February and March uploads is that they're gonna be shorter form and a little less highly edited. And the reason for that is because by March, the end of March, I'm moving. I'm gonna be leaving my humble abode um, by March. So these last few uploads are gonna be the last videos in this apartment. It's, uh, it's bittersweet, you know? Cause I don't really want, I don't really want to leave here. I actually really like living in the apartment. It's just, I, um, I want to save up money to put a down payment on a house so that I never have to worry about rent going up like every year. And that's why we're going to be moving somewhere where we can actually save money to finally put a down payment somewhere on a house and hopefully I can actually save up enough money to finally afford to replace my goddamn <laughs> to replace my goddamn iPad because I haven't done that yet because I am so poor I literally can't afford food. I'm so excited to be able to get out of here but at the same time I'm a little sad and that's why the Patreon is so important. Thank you to everyone who donates to that so that I can eat food. <laughs> I'm still gonna be doing this whole thing by the time I move into the new place. Um. I just don't know how I'm going to be setting up everything cuz I got I got a lot of recording equipment that I've collected over the years of doing uh this. So we'll see what the new setup looks like. But yeah, the next few videos are going to be very I won't say low effort. I'm just still put effort in it. It's just more so they're going to be less crazily edited, I guess I should say. They're gonna be way more laid back like this, you know what I mean? Anyways, uh, that's gonna be it. Um, don't fuck your nephews. <laughs> the end.